A few weeks ago, controller tap tracing was removed. However, that hasn't stopped many players, including myself, from pursuing controller movement. So today, I'm going to be walking you guys through the best controller movement guide for no tap strafing. We will first cover controller settings that will instantly improve your movement, and then we'll get into a few movement techs that you need to master right now more than ever. To end it off, I'm going to show you guys a few different legends that can supplement tap strafing. Alright, let's get straight into it. Enjoy. Alright, so as previously stated, I'm going to start with a few controller settings that are absolutely going to immediately improve your movement. So let's get straight into that. So this first one isn't technically a setting, it's more of my philosophy and controller movement, and it's the best thing that I can possibly recommend to anybody getting into it. So the secret to having good movement on controller is finding binds that work for you. And what I mean by that is finding binds that you can keep your thumbs on the joysticks at all times. I know most people don't enjoy playing claw and some people don't have paddles and that's totally fine because you can still find settings that will allow you to jump, crouch, inspect, heal, all those things while keeping your thumbs on the joysticks. So that is arguably the most important aspect to controller movement in my opinion. Let's get into the actual settings now. So the first setting that you want to make sure is on is auto sprint. This will allow you to reach your maximum velocity as fast as possible. It's also going to open up one whole new button that you can use for any bind you want, which will help with many people constructing their binds so that they can keep their fingers on the joysticks. The next setting is the crouch button. In my opinion, setting your crouch to hold is going to be extremely, extremely crucial to getting consistent bunny hops and just overall making your life much, much easier when it comes to every single movement tech. I'm just saying that if you can learn to play with crouch on hold, it's going to make movement much easier on controller. And the final setting that I want to get into today is your sensitivity. Before, with tap strafing on controller, you can get away with playing 4-3 linear. I never did, I'm not gross like you guys, but I do highly suggest that you play somewhere around 400 to 500 hip fire and around 150 to 200 for ADS. This is because all the other movement techs I'm going to get into later are going to be so much easier and so much more viable on a higher sense. Trust me, higher sense could be tough to get used to, but once you do, it's 100% worth it. All right, with all those controller settings out of the way, let's get into the actual movement guide. All right, so the first and arguably most important movement tech that we're going to be talking about is the simple fatigue wall bounce. So the biggest advantage of having tap strafe is being able to turn corners and get up walls extremely fast. However, without the ability to tap strafe, we can no longer do that unless you learn and master the fatigue wall bounce. So what the fatigue wall bounce is, it is essentially a simple wall bounce. Like you guys know, you jump into the wall, and then jump off the wall pretty simple but it doesn't require any horizontal velocity and can be used to get above and around walls just like this to learn how to fatigue wall bounce just spam jump real quick your first input will be a large jump like this after that it will be tiny hops just like this these are called fatigues so do a simple jump jump again and while you're jumping straight into the wall while turning at the wall connect at the wall and then jump straight up jump fatigue jump on the wall and then straight up so i highly highly suggest that you learn the fatigue bounce as it's going to help you get around corners uh and also just surprise your enemies the next supplement to tap striking that i have personally been abusing are directional super glides just like previously stated the best part about tap striking was the ability to turn corners extremely fast and keep your velocity through turns while you can no longer do that on controller for obvious reasons you can still abuse the crap out of directional super glides to learn the directional super glide you first need to know how to do a normal super glide i've touched on each of these movement techs in past videos but i still will give the full tutorial just for anybody that is new here to super glide all you have to do is mantle a box at the top of the mantle, hit jump and crouch essentially at the same time. The jump is delayed by a few milliseconds, however, if you're just now starting to learn it, I suggest trying to hit them at the same time. Once you get the feel for it, you can worry about that delay. So, like I said before, mantle, jump, and crouch all at the same time, and it'll look something like this. Now, to be able to directional super glide, that's going to require a different input from your left stick. Most people simply super glide straight forward, just like this. However, after you mantle, if you simply put a directional input of left, right, or even something like this, you can change the direction at which you will super glide in. To be able to shift your momentum extremely fast. Oh. Oh, I think my server crashed. Dude, I have no scripts, so this is like, it's pretty late too. You know, let's just talk for a second. It's been a long day. And I'm making this because you guys blew up the last video. So thank you for that. I really do appreciate it. Let me go look at the recording to see where I was. 
So to be able to shift your momentum extremely fast in gunfights, simply, simply super glide in a different direction than forward. If you've been watching any of my streams or YouTube videos, you'll know I've been abusing the ever living crap out of this with Valkyrie. I'm going to talk about Valkyrie and other movement legends later into the video, so stay tuned for that. Next, we're going to talk about simple zipline mechanics as, as this is the bread and butter to move on controller without tap strafing. So let's get straight into it. Your goal in movement on controller should be keeping your total velocity as high as possible when it comes to any kind of fight. You want to stay as fast and mobile as possible, uh, like pretty much 24-7, right? And zip lines are going to be a very, very nice and helpful way to do that. This is because you can build up a lot of velocity on a zip line simply by jumping off of it. So I'm going to be covering three different mechanics. One is going to be one that I've been implementing into my game very, very much recently, which is a simple disconnect into a slide. The next one is going to be the super jump zip line dancing. And the third is going to be the mantle jump. So let's start at the very bottom and build our way up. The zipline slide is a very nice way to get a lot of momentum very quickly and it only requires three simple inputs. First, interact with the zipline. Then, while interacting, hit crouch and push your left stick forward, just like this. Carry this momentum out with any kind of wall bounce or bunny hop, like this. This can be implemented into so many different situations and it can give you a budget way to instantly shift your momentum which if you haven't already caught the drift that's pretty much what we're trying to do with this movement guide we're trying to mix every single movement tech together to eventually build a budget tap strafe i know that doesn't really make any sense now but trust me it will in the future the second zipline mechanic that we're going to be talking about requires a little more precision and overall skill so let's start with the absolute basics at the default super jump this is going to be the most important aspect to zipline dancing, hands down. Uh, forget mantle jumping, forget, you know, little, little uh, zipline slides. If you do not know how to super jump, you're not going to be able to perform at the highest level when it comes to controlling movement. So I highly, highly suggest that you learn this. To complete a super jump, all you're going to have to do is hit interact and then jump twice like this. The whole input is extremely, extremely fast, so please do not beat yourself up if you cannot get it for the first time. I still miss it very, very often, so do not worry if you do not get it consistently immediately. So once you get that down, I want you to learn how to strafe in and out of zip lines. Hit a super jump, and instead of just letting go of your left stick, try strafing backwards. It's going to look something like this. Once you learn to strafe backwards, you're going to be able to look up or turn around so that you can connect to the zipline again. Once you get that consistently, all you're going to have to do is spam these inputs over and over again, and you will be able to zipline dance just like Fade. Now, when it comes to utilizing this in fights, that takes much more experience. It's taken me about 1800 hours on controller to get decent at zipline fights. Again, please do not beat yourself up if you do not immediately get as good as your favorite streamer. Uh, this stuff takes time. Trust me, it takes a lot of time. Some of us even installed R5 Reloaded to practice it. I know it's a game and we're literally practicing it in a separate game. Things get sweaty at this level, uh, but with enough time and practice, you will be able to learn this and apply it to your game, just like me, just like Accuracy, uh, and just like any other controller one player that you know. So the third and final zipline tech is going to be the mantle jump. The mantle jump, in a way, is a combination of the first two zipline tech. It requires precision getting off of the zipline as well as getting onto it. So to perform it, simply ride straight up a zipline, jump off of the zipline, and in this little mantle area, right here, where you're not quite holding onto the edge or climbing, this is where you want to look down, hold onto your interact, slightly move backwards, and then do a super jump. This took me, no joke, like 20 hours in the range just to get good with, like just to get two times in a row. So please do not get frustrated if you cannot get it first try. Again, the inputs are mantle, look down, walk backwards, hold X while walking backwards, and then super jump once you reach the zip line, just like this. Now, once you combine all three of these techs together, you are going to be completely unstoppable in streamer building. You're gonna be able to keep your momentum just like you would be able to on a tap strafe. Uh, so just master these three mechanics, and I promise you, you will be just as good as you were before with tap strafing. And the next and last two movement techs I'm going to be talking about that you need to apply to your gameplay ASAP is going to be the bunny hop and the fade slide. I save these two for last because they go very, very well together. Again, like I said earlier, the number one priority with controller movement is trying to keep that velocity as high as possible while also being able to dodge bullets without the ability to tap strafe. And that's why learning these two are so important. The fade slide gives you a lot of velocity really fast. It allows you to jump out of corners, surprise your enemy pretty much every single time. Trust me, 
this is still niche enough of a movement tech that people are not used to seeing it. And while the bunny hop is simple, it still allows you to keep momentum going around corners. Uh, and I've been using it very, very often, especially downhill, to keep my momentum while healing and all that stuff. So, to perform the two, first, let's talk about the simple fade slide. To perform the fade slide, all you have to do is crouch, holster your weapon, sprint while in the crouch. I know it sounds weird, but for some reason it works. Sprint while in the crouch, lift up off a crouch all while still sprinting, and then do a quick little slide. So... Sprint while in crouch, uncrouch, crouch, slide. This is pretty much what Fade uses to make himself look way more flashy than he actually is. No, no hate on Fade or anything. Uh, it's just this is a very, very easy movement tech to like spice up. Like if I here, if I use gyro, which by the way, if you guys do want a gyro tutorial, I know I've been using it throughout the entire video. Uh, it took me a while to set up, so I don't want the same for you guys. If you guys want that, then get this video to 501 likes. Um, but if I do a skip jump and I just do a gyro flick, then I'm going to look way more flashy and way faster than I actually am. This is why Fade always gets accused of like speed hacks and stuff. It's actually hilarious. It's just a simple fade slide that he, he created and abuses. So the inputs for that again is crouch while holstered, sprint in the crouch, uncrouch, continue to sprint, and then quick slide jump. All together, it looks like that. Trust me, boys, you want to implement this into your gameplay as soon as possible. You haven't already um you're messing out like crazy this is how you can get a lot of velocity on enemies extremely fast and once you pair it with the simple bunny hop you're gonna be unstoppable which speaking of the bunny hop if you listen to my two directions earlier of keeping your crouch on hold and auto sprint on all you have to do is push forward all you have to do is push forward slide jump stay in the crouch and then spam jump and you'll you'll get it it's very simple it's the simplest movement tech that can automatically enhance your movement allow you to get around corners while keeping momentum and just uh it, again it's crazy how well it pairs with the face slide so that is it for the movement techs that i believe you need to learn immediately now let's get into the few legends that give you essentially what is a budget tap tree all right so because of the removal of tap strafing right now it is more important than ever to find a legend main that can supplement it and that can just give you better movement overall. So we're going to talk about a few different ones, uh, starting off with Horizon. You may be asking me why I suggest Horizon to supplement tap strafing, and it's because of her passive. Her passive allows you to have better air strafe control, which means that on fatigue bounces, you can get up and around the wall much faster, and even often tides slide through as well. She's also going to be much more helpful when it comes to any other kind of movement tech, and just strafing out of it. Uh, she's pretty much going to be the budget tap strafe. The next pretty long time until they potentially add back another you know way to tap shift controller uh you're going to be seeing a lot of controller horizon players even though she was already extremely popular before she's going to be even more popular now another thing i want to touch on about horizon is her ability to use directional super glides and strafe backwards to essentially get what is a backwards super glide tap strafe so if you do a directional super glide to the side and then strafe backwards you should be able to recreate a very weak version of a tap strafe just like this the next legend or legends that I want to talk about are any kind of speed boost legends. The obvious picks are going to be people like Octane, Bangalore, uh, Bloodhound when he uses ult. Really any kind of speed legend is going to be helpful, especially after the removal of tap strafing. It's going to make you harder to hit, obviously, which can help supplement the removal of tap strafing uh, just by giving you that extra edge, by giving you a slight speed boost. And the last, but definitely my favorite legend so far since the removal of tap strafing, is going to be Valkyrie. Valkyrie is my current main, and I know a lot of people have been asking me why. And it's purely because I can do every single movement tech on her. Besides, besides obviously, the fun movement, the fun movement is much harder on Valkyrie. But besides that, every movement tech you can use the jetpack to essentially tap strafe out of it. Every single time you do a movement tech with Valkyrie, whether that is a wall bounce a super glide anything like that you can use your jetpack to instantly get a directional change and keep the momentum uh for the most part now i know your weapon gets taken away and it's really easy to overuse this and get killed uh i've learned that over like the past like week of playing her but if you can get used to it she's definitely gonna be the easiest way to close the gap between controller and mnk again if you guys want a gyro guide in the future then get this video to 501 likes uh check out my twitch make sure you subscribe and yeah and yeah hope this helped peace